This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, show number 428, recorded on January 2nd, 2020. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios here in a chilly, but Mike, kind of winter's here, but it's not. Last night, we, uh, my daughter and I, well, I smoked a cigar. We enjoyed a drink on the deck. It was 40, but the deck heater kept us pretty warm. Pretty nice for, uh, for December, January, right? Yeah, not bad at all. I, I'll take this weather any day. Yeah, no, super great. Of course, we, um, oh, you know, one of the things we did, um, actually, just as a kind of a side note, I downloaded uh, or installed the Flight Radar 24 app on my phone, and it will bring up a map. So when we're sitting out on the deck, it'll bring up a map of all the flights that are, you know, we're the flyover state, right? So when I sit on the deck, I watch these planes go over all the time, and I'm always kind of wondering, I wonder who's in that plane or who is that? What is that plane? So last night for about an hour, we just watched planes go by and brought it up on the, again, Flight Radar 24 is the app. You can actually click on the flight and it will tell you the flight number and where it originated from and where it's going and how fast it's going and what altitude it's at and, um, you know, the the airline that it is. It's a super cool flight, tra flight tracking app. And for us here in Nebraska, a great way to see, like we, we watched a plane take off out of Epley. And it was climbing, you know, it was 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, going, as it's going by us down to Dallas. And you could see I fly that, you know, twice a year. I make that flight down that, that path. It's pretty cool. Now, how in sync were those? Was there a delay at all? No, really good. See, and I've always been so curious about that, just the legality of it. And you would think just for safety reasons, they would put a delay in, right? So you couldn't know exactly where a plane was in the air. Uh, um, yeah. I know. mean... I and literally, Mike. Public information. Yeah, I could, we could sit there, and I could be like, "Okay, a plane is going to come out of this general area," and it just whoop, does. there it was, That's and cool. and we'd bring it across, and so um, it was really cool. That was just one of the fun things last night, as it was beautiful. Forty-one. I, I don't think it's quite. It's thirty-six now. So forty is about the break point for us on the deck with the deck heater, but we enjoyed that last night. Of course, we'll post the show with world class show notes out at the average guy. Dot TV. Just a couple of reminders. Don't forget, you can join us live on our mobile app, and many of you do. HomeGadgetGeeks.com is the way to get that done. We want to say thanks to Maple Grove Partners for sponsoring the show as well. Christian's actually really stepped up his game over the last couple of weeks and made some major updates to Maple Grove Partners. Not only do they sponsor us, but they do a great job over there of making sure everyone who needs it gets hosted for a great price. $10 will get you started on any plan. Contact maplegrovepartners.com if you need to you get your hosting. Mike, you, do, you, you have a site hosted there as well, right? I do. I do. And he makes it just so easy. Even the setup process, the thing I love about his service is the email, actually. So I run my email for that domain through him. Drop dead simple, works with all my mail clients and everything. I use them for everything, and it's it's just the best service. Lots of great conversations going on in the Discord group, theaverageguy.tv slash Discord. You can join us on Facebook, theaverageguy.tv slash Facebook. And uh, Mike, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. How did, uh, let's see, we didn't we didn't podcast after Christmas. Right. Everything go well there for you Christmas time? Yeah, the Christmas, I, I mean, we had so many Christmases kind of all over the board. We were down at the farm a lot. We were up here in Omaha, but got to see all the family and spent a ton of time. I took the week off, so uh, after Monday. And, um, and so just had a lot of time. Hannah took the rest of the week off too. So it was nice. We rarely get days where Hannah, especially because she works at the hospital, we rarely get days where we can both take time off and just be at home uh, and enjoy that time. So it, it was a, it was a solid week. And I just, I love just kind of that chill. The Thursday, Friday was my favorite. It was just me and Hannah and the boys. Uh, we went ice skating. We just did stuff pretty much both days, just all day, just hang out with the family. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Uh, we a big thank to a big thanks to Dave Jackson who joined us right before Christmas. We had a Joel from Life Door couldn't make it at the last minute. Dave came on, and so if you haven't listened to four twenty seven, uh, that is Dave, and we talk a little bit about all the gear that you not, might need if you're an at home worker. I think it's really important that you have good audio in what you're doing with that. And podcasters, I think, are doing it better than anybody when it comes to good audio. So if you haven't listened to it yet. 
TheAverageGay.tv slash HGG427. Mike, uh, Christmas for us was great. Um, I got a lot of ge- a great gear. I'm going to talk about it here in a second. Some I bought myself. I'll just I'll just admit it. Uh, some of the stuff I bought myself. But um, we had a little incident here at the Collison House where on Friday night, so Friday night after Christmas, uh, 27th, I think that was, we went to bed and um, woke up and I did ask the podcast coach with Dave Jackson and had fully intended to go get a workout in at work. And I jumped in my car and there were things a little moved around in there. And I was like, well, that's weird. What is this napkin doing on my seat? You know, it wasn't where I left it when I came out. So, you know, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to toss it over. Well, and then, first off, that's a great sign that you keep your car clean if you would notice a <laughs> napkin out of place. Because let me tell you, my car, I would not notice if a napkin was out of place. I probably wouldn't notice uh, if the car seats were missing out of my car. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's good that you keep your car that clean. Yeah, there were some napkins out of place. Yeah. And so, and then I always grab my phone and I plug it in. It's one of those things I plug it in. I got a little, you know, I have a little uh, metal plate here that then I attach it to a magnet on my dashboard. And I always plug it in, always. And I go to reach for the cable, and I'm like, cable's gone. That's kind of weird. So then I I go down, and the armrest is open. That's kind of weird, right? So I start looking around like, oh, like someone's been in my car, right? So I immediately think, oh, my gosh, the the, the other cars. So I go out, and and unfortunately, we, we left them all unlocked. Or maybe fortunately, but they probably would have moved on. But we had some folks come rummaging through. All three cars that were out were unlocked. Um, uh, the my, my son is actually funny. They didn't take very much, maybe a few dollars in cables. It's pretty much all they got in the process. We don't keep very many things in our car. My, my son, who's in Japan right now uh, visiting, his car is parked here. And I, he said, hey, did they take my parking pass? I said, no. Sunglasses still there? Yeah, they're still there. He goes, what about everything in the center console? And I said... Oh, no, that's cleaned out. He's like, ha-ha, joke's on them. Those were all broken cables. <laughs> it's weird they wouldn't take the sunglasses. No, I know. They didn't. Right? Like, or, so- or or the garage door openers, which are there, right? Yeah. And so, um, which tells me they're like nah, kids. No, it's kids. Kids. Right? Right? It's yeah. kids. It's kids. It's kids. Just kids, yeah. It's out kids just checking cars, right? Yeah. See, and and. Fortunately or unfortunately, mine were all unlocked, and you know it. it Probably it, fortunately, you don't know. I mean, they could have been no. breaking windows. They might not. They might not have been that motivated. But. No, there were no other broken windows on the street okay. that night, so it got me thinking. You know, hey, they've been locked. Well, we're we're really fortunate that I, we don't keep anything in our cars for the most part. I mean, it's it's we just don't. There's some cables and stuff, and Sarah's going to need to rebuy some cables, and you know, it's going to cost me twenty five bucks. But, um. It got me, it, it, it kind of shook me. Like I came back in the house and I was really upset. Like, ah, uh, you just kind of feel like, Violated. So, yeah, someone's been in your house, yeah. you know, type, type deal. And I had trouble getting back on track the rest of the day. Well, one of the weird things, I always keep a cam, we call it the package cam. So it sits in the spot where packages are delivered and it's always just watching its job. is just to watch that one spot where packages get delivered. It also has access to the driveway. You can actually see it from the driveway, which I think has kept a lot of mischief out. During the Christmas holiday in the Facebook, both in the Facebook and the Discord group, I had posted a deal for the Ring doorbell, uh, Gen 2 doorbells. 80 bucks would get you both a Echo Show 5 and the Ring doorbell. And I bought it. I took myself up on that deal that I, I posted it and I bought it. And it came in just before Christmas. And I had intended to install it. Saturday. So Friday, I moved the package cam to the backyard because that's where it's now the backdoor cam in preparation for Saturday afternoon installing the ring doorbell. Well, guess what happened, right? All that happened when the camera was down, when it was gone. It was in the backyard, not here, not in the front. And I had not put the ring doorbell on the front door just yet, right? What are the odds? I know. Of all the nights, I mean, how many times has your car got broken into? Never. Never in the, the twenty one years. Night is I know. The night you have swapped your camera. Well, and and maybe yeah, and maybe the reason over the last couple of years is we've always had a camera in that window. And I and I people look right. I today when the UPS guy was delivering mm-hmm. packages, uh, I or the Amazon guy. They're not UPS anymore. They're they're Amazon folks. 
when he walked up, by the way, he didn't walk on my grass, which was super considerate of him. He walked around the driveway, up the stairs. And then when he left, he did the same thing. How do I know? Because I got cameras. And we'll right. talk about that here in a second. But he checked out both cameras that were both the, the, the ring, which got installed, the door cam that got installed. And then I put a new camera in the package cam spot. Uh, that remember those D links we bought a couple years ago. In fact, it was like 2016. Yeah, they were on it. sale. It's on my back patio. That one came out. It had been in the garage, and I moved that out and made that the package cam. Um, he looked at them, and so I think thieves or people that are looking notice those kinds of things. And I think actually having cameras are a deterrent. So that day, install the doorbell. Uh, by the way installing a ring doorbell this is the battery version not the wired version but the battery version so i had it up and working in an hour i mean it was super easy to do super easy to put in works the the app is awesome i'm sure for some of you camera buffs and other stuff there's things wrong with it i don't i never find those things that are wrong with it you know no, but i'd agree even the wired one when i did my simply safe doorbell same exact thing i mean dead simple Right, the the hardest part was taking off the former doorbell, but I, same as you had everything up and running in about half an hour. I'd say on yeah. that safe, and that was the wired version. So right, it, not bad at all. No, really, really easy, great cam, good, good resolution. It looks good. The other thing I noticed today um, is that when the UP or when the Amazon guy was delivering, typically they would put them up against the house or the door directly at our house. He saw the cam and then he put it out far enough where the cam could pick it up. And I thought, wow, I think. Now, we always get our packages right up against the door. Today, it was just far enough out I could see it on the cam. Yeah. And I thought, oh, okay. So maybe they're, maybe these delivery drivers, because, you know, they're setting it down. They're taking a picture of it. That picture's coming to you for delivery, right? That's kind of the way it works now, so they can prove where it's at. But they put it in view of the cam, now, of the doorbell cam. Now, he also looked at the cam that was facing the area of the entire porch. I can see everything on my porch now and uh so he could put it in either spot and i'd been able to see it but just it was kind of interesting that the amazon guy put it in the field view of the well of you gotta think for them how many calls that saves right mm -hmm. the, you get home it says your package was delivered it's not there well was it the ups guy not dropping it off or was it stolen as long if he's placing it he could probably say you know like well or or if he knows you have cameras that you're gonna go watch them right and be like oh it was stolen right you know? yeah. but that's one thing i've always said is a lot of people when they're looking at these cameras when i'm reading the forums they're saying, oh, I really wish it had a brown version because that would blend in with my house better. If you can get the spouse on board <laughs> with having a little bit of an eyesore, and you can get, you know, my ones are dome. They look, I mean, I think they look professional, right? They don't look decorative, but they're not supposed to. They're supposed to catch their eye. So I use the opposite color. I use the most blatant color you can because you're so right. I catch people, I mean, my house is littered with cameras, so it's really easy for them to see. Uh, but I, all the time, people walking by are always looking up at the cameras and... Even if they're just walking the dog, you know, you catch their eye and they'll look up at it. So, yeah, yeah I agree. Always, I think, go with one that maybe stands out more um, because it, it, that's what you're going for, really. Because uh, even if I see someone steal something, what are the odds that they're going to be able to use that footage to find the guy? Not very good. No. Right? No. It's um, a deterrent. So it's a deterrent and it's more for stuff like this, right? Like, oh, my Amazon package is here. Oh, yeah. you know. What happened? How did Petey get out? Oh, look at that. Someone went and opened the gate and they left it open and yeah. those sort of things. T today I saw a squirrel come across the, <laughs> the cam, which was, which was super cool. But yeah, deterrent, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, so as I put the doorbell cam up and as I put the package cam up, I kind of realized, like, you know, the driveway is, while I can kind of see it, I really can't. And it's got a, you know, I've got a deck and some a railing in the way, and then it drops down pretty, pretty uh, deep for me. And there's stuff that is hidden. So I, this was, if I was ever going to buy cameras, this is the best time to buy them. Because if I just say, I need another camera, Sarah just says, yes, go buy it. <laughs> right. Right. So I said, Hey, I'm buying another, I'm going to buy a stick up cam. And I did a, I kind of looked at some things like, okay, do I, what do I go with? Do I get a wise cam or do I get another Z moto cam or do I get, and I just kind of decided, you know, I'm already going to be in the ring space. I looked at the stick up cams and Mike, an, another real, I got the battery version. I got the white again. So it kind of sticks out. And it couldn't have been easier to install. Really, two screws into the side of the house, a few caps, charge the battery, slam them in. 
attach it to the app and you were up and running. The, the one hang up I had is that the Wi-Fi is here is in the middle of the house. That has to go through a concrete wall and the exterior wall to get to the stick up cam. And it just wasn't powerful enough. I was not getting very good. And I tried moving my, I have just one bit defender box in the house. The, the, the router is the, the Wi-Fi router. It's just that 2.4 and five um, on a single, you can set it. So it just determines what you need. This actually caused me to split the two signals out. So I have an SSID now. I have a 2.4 SSID and a 5 gig SSD. So I could assign these. A lot of these cams like the 2.4. They don't want to. They don't want to be on the five. Right. But at the end of the day, I found the solution was that Ring Chime Pro for 50 bucks. So um, that what that acts as is a ringer in areas where you don't have one, and it's a Wi-Fi extender. It actually worked. It was like I bought it. Plugged it in. It literally just plugged into the the um, outlet in my ceiling in my garage. Came on. I did a few setups. Attached it to the network. Video problem solved. At that point, I was like, wow, this is... I mean, I even... I was really careful how I unboxed that. Because I was getting ready to take that thing back to Best Buy. If it hadn't... Right. You know, if it didn't... Uh, uh, if it didn't work. And that's another great tip. When you were talking about 2.4 and 5. So one other quick tip on that, too, is because I've done the same thing. Um, if you use Unify gear, everyone who uses Unify gear, the access points knows that you can configure multiple SSIDs on each, but what you can also do. So for me, I have th actually three different SSIDs in my house. I have my main network, my guest network, and one for my security cameras. Well, the one for the security cameras, I have it because you can set per SSID, which radios you want it to use. So for my guest and my main, it's 2.4 and five, same name. So that way, I, on my devices, I don't have to pick and choose. Right. And then on the camera SSID, that's just using 2.4. So if you're using something like Unify or something like it where you can really granularly control those, on your just make a camera network separately and then or just an SSID too. It doesn't even need to be a separate network if you don't yeah. want to. I have a security subnet, and no internet's allowed to flow out of that subnet except for from my DVR box. Yep. That way I know any of these Chinese cameras I put on my network, they can go and talk to the D yeah. the NVR, but they cannot reach out right. to the internet. So yeah. kind of two tips there. Check out your SSIDs and if you can control that. And number two, I really suggest ring, reputable ones. I mean, and you need the internet for those. That's the hard part, right? Those go straight to the internet. But if you're using one like Sighthound or Blue Iris, restrict all internet to that subnet and then allow internet from the one IP address of the NVR on the network. It's a really good yeah. way to, to control that security a little bit. And I've noticed if I open it up, these sort of cameras like to ping something. I don't know what they're pinging. Um, it, you know, it could just be a time server or something like that, but, you know, not really know. So yeah. like, eh, why not? Why not? They don't need to go out to the internet for anything. Uh, now, when I do firmware upgrades, I do sometimes have to f turn that rule off and then turn it right back on when I'm done doing the firmware upgrade. Yeah, I I was actually surprised as I get into my Bitdefender box. By the way, here's another tip: is I was struggling the the night. So this would have been Sunday night that I was trying to get the stick up cam installed. It wasn't working very very well. I had Monday off, so I kind of planned to go by Best Buy on Monday and pick up the Chime uh, extender. But I thought, hmm, you know, maybe I should split my networks. So here's a tip. Don't split your networks from your phone at 1230 at night and break all your SSIDs, knowing that I was getting up early in the morning to go work out. And as the girls woke up, none of the Echo devices would work oh. to be able to run Watt Lights, right? That's what I was thinking. the name changed. Yeah, I changed the name on that stupid thing. Yep. So I had to get, come downstairs and reconfigure things to make it work. Like, don't do that from bed yeah. at 1230. <laughs> <laughs> and and on, on that note, too, two things. One, uh, Tony asked real quick, if you ceiling mount a Unify AP, which I do, I have two ceiling mounted uh, AC pros. And he said he's heard that they'll cover two floors. Uh, depending on your flooring, I think that's totally true. I am in my basement, and I get perfect 100% coverage from my access points that are in the main room, uh, in the main level, on the ceiling of the main level. Now, granted, my basement's unfinished, so there's there's flooring, obviously, but there's not like another, you know. There's no ceiling to this floor, uh, mm -hmm. but perfect coverage. Number two, I've learned too. So, Jim, you're talking about switching SSIDs, and I did this recently. If you need, if you decide, you know what, I want to be really secure. I want to have an IoT subnet, an IoT SSID, where all those things are going to live and be really controlled. It's much easier 
to leave that with the same name because those things are such a pain to reprogram the Wi-Fi in. You have to figure out what app it was. Was it the Amazon app? Was it the Alexa app? Was it all this stuff? And some of them you have to log into the IP address. So just leave that the same and create yourself a new network that's your secure network. Yeah. So uh, for me, you know, I had um, – uh, my example network and so i left the example network and then made an example network slash s for secure so i know it's my secure one so leave it if you can and then create well and then that way because how many devices are you really going to put on it your laptops your phones which are super easy to plug in right. a new wi-fi name it's such a good example because i had put the both the doorbell i had put the security screw in it and the stick up cam and then you can't i had put it. I, <laughs> you got to go in the side both to reset them yep so yeah, uh, Ryan and Ryan says out in the chat room. So, so he you goes, could have even named your 2.4 network, kept that the same name, just without anything. And that's right? what I did. That's what and, I did. Yeah, yep. And yeah. then you change your five gigahertz, and then you can plug everything on the five yeah. gigahertz. Network name 5G is what I is what I is yep. what I titled exactly. it. Ryan says that's how you're up all night. You're up early to fix everything. <laughs> well, there's uh, Ryan. There's a lot of truth to that. Um, Brian says the cams, as well as these Echo devices, are contagious. Start with one, and they multiply. Okay, no joke. So with the doorbell came a nearly free, it was $10, Echo Show 5. So I got a second because I had bought an Echo Show 5 back when they were like 20 bucks, I think, right? And then the stick-up cam came with a free Amazon Echo Dot. That's, you know, 25 bucks, 25 to 50 bucks, depending on where you buy it. Um, and so, and then, um, uh, we picked up another free one. Um, well, uh, Tajoski sent me, uh, and you, a Google home mini. I know I was going to talk about that cause I'm now have them side by side and I've been kind of going back and forth between the two to see kind of differences <laughs> cause I have an echo dot and the mini right next to each other. So yeah, they just start like all these devices just start popping up in your your house so you have to be um super careful i mean how long is it till you know 250 addresses on a on a single subnet isn't going to be enough because most people have never considered uh, having you know two subnets or opening that up to have you know I, I would never have thought of that i'm thinking about all the different all the different ip addresses that are just on my desk that's what i mean right that's what i'm talking Min, about and then mini, the lights like these Echo. Rise lights are not through a hub all right they are individually connected to your wi-fi so each of those is an ip address yeah 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 um uh lowe's was having a sale on phillips uh tunable lights this this week you could get two for 20 bucks 10 bucks each not too bad for the a19 lights that you can put in they're Wi-Fi enabled as well. They don't go through the Philips Hue router. Right. They're Wi-Fi enabled, right? Well, man, install a couple of those, and all of a sudden, yeah, you're right. Like, I'm gonna have to figure out how to how to do net traversal. Yeah. <laughs> so right yeah. on some of these as we think about it. Um, okay, so I uh, got all those set up. Uh, I had mentioned I had that D-Link thing from a couple years ago. That came down to be the package cam. Um, two Z motos, and we did a program on this, right? I had that Z moto camera, that little square one outdoor. That's the one that had been the package cam. It's an outdoor camera, and I actually thought it was pretty sad that I was using it indoors. So I took it out because it's got a great night vision on it, and it should be outside. It's waterproof, it's weatherproof, right? So I moved that to the backyard, and then I bought that Z moto spot, which, um, Swiss, uh, it pivots 360. It's really meant to be inside where you want 360 access to your house. So you can yeah. check on kids or dogs or those kinds of things. And I taken the D-Link out of the garage. So I put the, I put that spot or whatever it's called. We'll just call it a spot for now. And I had thrown it out into the, I, so I put it out into the garage. So I got all the coverage I did. So I went from really two cams <laughs> to five pretty quickly. And then I started thinking, Mike, now I got to manage all this stuff, right? So the Ring app is pretty good, but it doesn't talk to the Zmodo app. And the Zmodo app is pretty good, but it doesn't talk to Ring or Sighthound. Ring, I can't get on Sighthound. The D-Link camera is really best. Like D-Link has not upgraded their software in a while. So really that's best on Sighthound because that's yep. RTMP, right? And, RTSP. and so, RTSP. Yep. So I kind of had a little bit of a nightmare on my hands as you start to think, and, and I'm not saying I've solved this, but I, I, it came down to this. So I put ring, I have a, a Amazon fire seven. Um, I'll take that comment off there. An Amazon oh. fire seven device that runs the, the ring screen really nicely. So that yeah. is there. 
Then I have an old Samsung Galaxy 4 Note. That was my wife's phone. I put the Zmodo app on that one. So that is right there. And those sit here at my desk. I can see those anytime. Of course, I can get to all of them off my phone. So when I'm remote, I can do it that way. Then I have a monitor set up here that's running Sighthound on the studio PC because that's where that runs. And then I install the second monitor right here. So like you, because I wanted to be like you, Mike Weger, I wanted to have a monitor where I could see my Sighthound stuff going yeah. all the time. So I can look up right here and see the front door cam. And which can, is on Sighthound. Yeah. 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 So it's a little convoluted at this point, like having three apps and all kinds of notification, but it, it kind of works for now. Like I'd like to get yeah. it all in one spot, but I, you know, and there's the, I struggle with that too, because there's pros and cons to each. So, so my setup is I have nine cameras all on Sighthound. And then I have the only thing outside of Sighthound is my simply safe doorbell because it's I tried really hard to try and find a doorbell that would just have an RTSP stream that I could use a Sighthound. Uh, but really, when you think about the doorbell, the whole feature is like when they ring it, all the alerts. So I decided, you know what? I'll have two different systems. I'll have Sighthound and I'll have Simply Safe. And Simply Safe also came with an indoor camera. So I'm kind of like you. I have kind of two main systems I check. I think, it, you know, it depends on who I'm talking to and who, what I'm recommending for any person. If this is someone I'm going to not be able to help in the future, just a random person off the street, you know, what's, you know, what's kind of your tech background and do you have extra spare computers around? If not, go with Ring, go with something like that and just, you know, kind of go all in on one system. But I've always, you know, for, for probably this community, I think you really have to give consideration to, though, going full into like a blue iris or sighthound mm -hmm. only because of what you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of the cameras, if you're using them with blue iris, first of all, you can buy a ton of different cameras mm -hmm. and with all different price ranges, you can get the cheap Chinese stuff that works great. I have a few of those. I have a few of the high dollar ones. I have a whole mixed bag. Um, and the great part about that, Jim, is you were talking about my monitor up here and I do it right above this screen is a monitor. It's just a nice four, simple four grid. That's not even using Sighthound. It's the same cameras that go to Sighthound, but this is just a Raspberry Pi that can pull in four RTSP streams and put them in a nice little grid. It doesn't record, doesn't do it. Just all I just need to do is view. Um, and so I can take that Raspberry Pi and I can just copy that SD card and go put Raspberry Pis wherever I need them. Um, it just opens you up to a lot more options, but you know, it goes back to what you said earlier, the convenience of running those cameras that you have, right? They're battery powered. Like that's fantastic. I think it's really, it'd be really hard to find one of those for my system. All of mine, I had to go and hardwire. All of mine are PoE. And so I had to run wire to all the different corners of the house. And so me adding a camera is a weekend project, you know, whereas for you, you probably had that up in 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. for you, that 10 minutes, you switching between apps probably doesn't cause you too much no. grief. No, I actually just put the apps in a folder on my phone, and I get notifications when they go off, and you don't need to worry about the apps at that point. I yeah. actually don't think having different cameras from di different ecosystems is that big of a deal. Now, when when we think about the automation, I'm going to talk about this here in a second. Well, I, one thing. Yeah, well, there, yeah. well, I think the only thing there is subscription fees. If you're paying for the recording, yeah. you could end up paying multiple subscription fees. That is true. Right. Yeah, the only one that I is true. Think of. No, no, that's a good one. I hadn't, actually hadn't thought about that. So I'll have to kind of think through. The ring is actually really reasonable. Three bucks a month. You can pay 30 bucks a year for the minimum. Per camera? You go, uh, no, for the whole thing. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah, yeah. And then I think, I have to, I'll have to double check on that. But then $10, the most expensive plan is $10 a month or $100 a year. And that's actually super reasonable, right? We, we, we've had those guys on here way back in the day. They're trying to keep these plans pretty reasonable um, to get that done. I, I need to check my I need to check my options. Did you want to add to that? No, go ahead. I'll, I'll finish up later. Okay. So um, yeah, I, I really can't. At least at this point, I know it's going to start annoying me after a while. But you know, these things won't last forever, and I'll start replacing them pretty quick, and then I can start bringing them in. You know, kind of gives me a chance to kind of get into the ecosystem, back into the ecosystem. I had home security before, but I never really took it very seriously. You know, I set the cameras up and then I kind of, you know, one of the things I've loved about Sighthound is the recording. Like, and so, you know, I actually set up a bunch of disk space this weekend to be able to record that and go back through and watch it. And the resolution on it is really good. And it's a plugged in cam. So I never have to worry about the replacing the battery on that one. And yeah. it's got a good view of the street and... Like, there's lots of things for consideration um, kind of in that. One of the things I did do is I was installing the stick-up cam. Right below it is a security light. 
in the it had been a um, motion had a motion sensor on there, and at some point in time, the motion sensor stopped working because somebody jammed a stick into it or something and broke it, right? And so I was moving one of the lights, like one of the lights was kind of high and it was blocking where I put the stick up cam. And as I was moving one of the lights, it was a plastic. This When I bought this whole unit, it was plastic. It literally, Mike, I just touched it and it broke. Like it just, <laughs> the, the plastic had been up there for 10 years maybe. And it was wow. super brittle. Like, you know, what yeah. plastic oh, happens yeah. yep. in Nebraska, right? So I ended up getting, so uh, not necessarily a tech gadget, but I did end up getting a, and I'll go full screen on this one so you guys can see. I'm addicted I, to those, Jim. It, it almost looks like a Star Wars character, right? It does, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that you brought those lights up. Um, you So uh, LED on the front here, motion sensing, $30 on Amazon, not, not, not rocket science or necessarily super techy, three wire, plug it in, easy to use. But um, I will be replacing those lights up there as well. One of the things that gave me the advantage, those big round uh, lights that I'd had in there, you know, the, what do we call it, spotlight or floodlights? Yeah. Um, they had a really high profile. And so I didn't have a lot of room for the stick-up cam. With these now, I get a lot lower of a profile and way more uh, energy efficient. Way more, uh, yeah. And usually brighter than what you were paying yeah. for. Yeah. And you know, so I'm a huge... This is kind of my sweet. I love home security and home security and that's all senses of home security, like having a plan with your family for a burglary, armed robbery, kind of like what is your what is your plan, right, to defend your home? And um, the first step of that is always to make sure your house isn't a target in the first place, right? Like it's great to have that plan for if someone breaks in, what is our plan? But let's just make sure that our house isn't even targeted. All you need to do is make the other house across the street look more appealing than your house and lighting is such an easy especially nowadays with leds and how cheap those you said 30 dollars. i mean that is nothing and that lights up a space especially and so motion detected lights are like my favorite thing to anywhere you can add them go for it and you know i have some really cheap solar powered led ones so i don't because i didn't have any power run to the spot where i was going to put them uh but it's over in these tiny little corners where someone could be hiding could get in there and look into our windows and so as soon as anyone walks in there they could if they can't hide in the bushes without being lit up like a you know because <laughs> it's just in this corner and as soon as that motion detects it, it doesn't even have to be that bright but uh it was a ten dollar little thing that i put in there that that really helped i love those lights anything motion detected lights Man, you and I could nerd out on home security and home defense, really. <laughs> home defense especially. Uh, that could be a whole segment, whole Kinda show. Well, itself. we're going to make most of this yeah. show about it, just to be honest well, with and you. And so the only thing I'll mention about the um, – while we're talking about security. So we were talking about multiple systems. So the things you also got to remember is if you really go all in on something like Ring, just make sure you have the upload bandwidth on your internet. Because the one thing I really like about running Sighthound is that it doesn't take any of my bandwidth. So no internet bandwidth is taken up because it's all just going LAN to the MVR. So well, I've, just, I've had a few people who have gone all in on these rings and they have like six cameras and they only have like a 10 or 5 megabit upload and they cannot do anything else on their network because these cameras are putting out quite a bit. I mean, they're 1080p cameras. Those are putting up quite some... Uh, Quite a lot of numbers when it comes to mm -hmm. bandwidth so just when you're is really the the overall theme here is plan out before you really jump into this i wouldn't because a lot of people i think just go to best buy and grab a camera and they don't really think about what ecosystem do i want to be in do i want it to be going over the internet am i going to stick with this so it's all these things you just got to really plan out before you jump into one ecosystem well and this they're kind of like me they get in the situation where something happens to you and then you're just in reactionary mode right. and you're not necessarily thinking it all the way through you're just yeah. like I need a camera now and I'm going to watch it straight for the next 24 hours kind of deal because you just need to make yourself feel good. By the way, this is aluminum casing, so we won't have that problem again of this thing snapping, uh, you know, this plastic snapping. Mike, one of the things where I want to get some feedback from listeners, and I, and I really want this uh, not necessarily in our chat room live, but if you're watching this on YouTube, put it in the comments down below. Or if you're in our Discord or in our Facebook group, I'll take those there. Um, you can reference it later. One of the things I want to do, and I have a, this light is currently also connected to the porch light, which are both now, uh, well, this will be motion sensing, but the porch light is not. It's just a light that's up there. One of the things I think I want to do is put them on a switch, on a smart switch, 
so that I can, if I leave the house and I forgot to turn on the, the, I forgot to turn them on, I can turn them on. But not necessarily for that. I want to create some home automation bits with sun up and sun down because I don't want to replace right now. I don't want to replace the light that's over the porch with a motion sensing sun up, sun down. By the way, that's this has that as well. Okay. I want to leave it in place and I want to mess with switches. Could you so, just do a smart bulb? Um, in that one, and then leave yeah, the switch always on. Well, but here's the deal: I really want a monkey with a smart switch. Like, okay. so this gives me this gives me a reason to put As a smart in, switch. And you don't mean just the outlet, you like the actual switch. No, the actual switch. I've been wanting yeah. to play with those too. So that's a great question because yeah. I want to know if people are finding they're actually reliable. Do they work well? I have not used a switch as of yet. A Wemo, I think it's Wemo, has a three, and I need a three way switch because it's it's controlling on and off from both upstairs and downstairs. So if you have a recommendation for me, love to, and Ken asked, do you have a neutral wire in the house wiring? I don't know, Ken. I don't think so, um, which may cause problems when we do these smart switches. So love to hear about that. That's a discussion I want to take offline, either down in the comments here on YouTube, throw it in the Discord group, throw it in the in the Facebook group. More of a conversation uh, I'd rather do along those lines. The other thing this caused me to do is get my Hubitat, right? Remember Hubitat? We had them. Oh, how yeah. long? How yep. long ago was that? Was it? It's like nine months ago, maybe. Had to be. I think it was Back early nineteen. Yeah. Um, never really got that thing working, and uh, used this as an opportunity. I kind of thought, um, gosh, you know, I got this thing sitting around. I should probably figure out how to make this crazy Hubitat thing work. So let me let me just prove to you, just so that you know that I actually did this thing. Uh, here, we'll share the screens with you. Um, here I've got easy or every sync. We'll talk about that a little bit later uh, as we talk about that's another conversation. But there's the Hubitat dashboard set up right now. I've created a little a little tab for the time. I've got a light section. I've only put one light here on Hubitat. So this is the this is the litter box light, <laughs> which I have full control over. I can make that thing dim or loud. Right now the cat is freaking out. He's like, yeah. what are you doing to the light, Dad? <laughs> Um, and one of the cool things, uh, so you can do lights and door locks and all, there's some other things. I don't have many of the things that I would need for this, but it also controls your Chromecast, which is kind of cool. So you can control the volume on your, your Chromecast. It'll even tell you what the media source that's coming in on that Chromecast. So I set up a box for the volume that's right here. And I set up a, this would say YouTube if I was watching YouTube or whatever, I'm Plex if I wanted to do it that way. So, um, yeah, so many of you, we did the show. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on Hubitat now, but uh, just just for transparency's sake, I did get the Hubitat up and running. I'll continue to be looking at it and devices. Mike, that's another thing to consider. Like the beauty of the Hubitat is you can kind of get everything in a single dashboard. Yeah. Um, I actually installed it on a PC that's touchscreen to make it even easier. And Hubitat has some home automation stuff, has some automating things. It's not the only thing that will automate your your IoT devices, but it is a thing. And so it kind of got me thinking like, okay, I need to get this thing up and running and figure this thing out. It's a little more, it's a little less tech friendly. Like you have to be pretty technical to get this Hubitat thing kind of running at times. But I can see where they're going with it. Like after using it now, and I was thinking back to the interview that we did with those guys, it's kind of like, oh, okay, I get this now. <laughs> I see. And by the way, gotten a ton better since we, even since we had them on, um, I think back in the spring. Um, yeah, because I've, I've really settled on um, Amazon or Google kind of being kind of the hub essentially for all of that. And I tell you, so because of the uh, the fantastic gift from Jajoski, I was actually testing out just before the show, adding all my lights into the Google Home ecosystem. And man, that was pretty slick. And the, all the options that it can do and the routine yeah. and skills. And yeah. so really with those two, um, those have been their their routines and their things that they've been getting better at are, are pretty good. You can build a pretty cool automated workflow with Amazon. I haven't tried it with Google yet. Uh, but those routines in Amazon, those, those are pretty nice. You well, know, and Play this music is... here, turn off this light here, do this here with this command or this time or this trigger. Pretty cool. And that's the $64 million question, Mike, is now you can do a lot of the same things. You know, the Amazon devices and the Google devices, they're very similar in their automation space and what they're doing. 
you could get a Hubitat to do some of that kind of for you. You can create some if this, then that routines that are built in. You can do this in a lot of the apps that you get. So yeah. the Philips Hue app is trying to be a single hub for you to do automations that are in. The D-Link app that you have tries to be a home automation device for all the things that you have. But they only work with their products in most of those cases. And so, right, you're yeah, limited on that side. But that's what I love about Amazon and Google is that they're really, I mean, there are so many, they control a lot of stuff, right? Like I have not found a smart bulb yet that cannot be controlled by either one of those. So what's next is, can you guys get my security camera footage in here too, right? Now yeah, that yeah. I don't want because it, the automation there lives in the cloud. So that works really well for, uh, you know, bulbs and switches and playing music i do not want all my videos to the whole reason i have sighthound is so i control that video there's i've i found jim that for me you would think i was either like a full like privacy hardcore don't give any of your stuff to the cloud like especially because i'm like next cloud and i'm you know sighthound and all that stuff and then there's up uh, but those other ones i'm like nah i'm okay like i'm okay the, like the the convenience of some of these are worth it for me mm -hmm. and so for some of the automation i'm totally fine trusting with you know google's cloud and amazon's cloud uh i am not there yet with video um just because i, I have started adding some in the house cameras and i don't know i just i haven't gotten on board with that yet. i'm sure i will in the future the convenience factor will be good but while i have the hardware in a rack to run all this stuff might as well use it yeah Couple, let's get to the chat room really quick. A couple yeah. questions came in while you're talking. Alex says, any reason besides price you didn't use the ring floodlights with camera combined? Okay. So when I was making the purchase, I didn't know my lights were broken. <laughs> like they were still fine. It was when I got up to this location, I realized, oh, the uh, motion sensor doesn't work anymore because the motion sensor is broken. And then as soon as I touched the light and it broke the arm, I mean, it, Mike, it literally just crumbled. It didn't break. It like crumbled on me. Again, plastic and really cold environments does yep. not survive more than a year or two. And so at that point, then I was like, and actually, you know, those, I think those ring with the floods that I would have gotten all in one would have been 200 bucks. And I did it for 130. So price, that's kind of why I did that. So Alex, great question. And I did look at those. I almost bought, I think you can get those refurbed. You can get the box that's got a flood in it. So it's a, cindle, it's a cylinder and then it's got two lights on the side of the camera that come on uh, as a flood. One, I don't think they're as bright as I want them to be. Um, you can get those for like 179, I think refurbed. So there's some price options there, but Alex, that's kind of why I went with that. Ken reminds me without neutral wires, so he'd ask me that question. It's an old house, so I got to think this through. They were very limited when he looked a while ago for these switches. Lutron was the was the only smart switch he could find at the time that didn't That's require interesting. it. Yeah, I, I know nothing about wiring, so I don't even know what a neutral wire is. I wouldn't know what to look for if I opened up my panel. Well, it's a good. So here's the deal. It's a good, th and I'm pretty sure it doesn't. That's a really good question, Ken, for me to ponder before I start, because if if that's the case and I can't put a smart switch on it, then Mike, I'm really just gonna probably replace that, the even though that's fairly new, that's up there, the one, the porch light, I'm gonna have to replace it with something. And um, so that that may, I may have to get a smart, a whole unit that's uh, that's smart to do that um, as well. So Ken, thanks well, for that thought. you couldn't thought. just do a new bulb, a smart bulb? Maybe. Maybe that'd be, that'd be a good look. It's one of those decorative bulbs and oh, it's pretty small. Gotcha. Now I know they have some smart bulbs that are smaller. So that, that's or why maybe, the I don't know. Would make sense for yeah, you. no, it would, it would indeed. Uh, Kevin Schooner says, if you use Alexa or Amazon as your hub, do you lose automation if you lose the internet? The answer is yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, you, do. yes you do. Yeah. That was the whole Hubitat pitch, right? But you know, and so yes, you do lose your automation. Another reason though, why it's great to have, Sighthound, because I do not lose my cameras if I lose internet mm -hmm. because all of my cameras. So okay, all local. the camp benefits. Yeah. It's local. I have a battery backup in my rack, which is where my MVR is. That battery backup is also backing up my switch. That forty-eight port switch is PoE, which is powering all my cameras. So my cameras will not go down in a power outage, um, and I don't need internet to be recording. So my battery will last, I think, twenty minutes. So. Uh, you know, in my doomsday scenario, I see someone outside snipping my power because they know I got all this stuff and I'm trying to break <laughs> in. And they, they're like, oh, ha, 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 he's not going to record any of this. And I have 20 minutes of being record of recording them while they're gone because yeah. it's all local and because my cameras went on PoE. 
You just reminded me of a Scooby-Doo episode when they, no, just kidding. Um, one of the things, uh, you know, Hubitat, so since we had them on, right, they were a local only solution, right, at that point that they didn't, they weren't doing anything in the cloud. That's yeah. since changed. So your oh, dashboard, really? yeah, your dashboard can now go to the cloud. However, you have both options. You can switch between local and in the cloud. That makes it really convenient if you don't want to remote desktop in, right, or set up a port forwarding or any of those kinds of things to get that done. It, they, they do now have a cloud option for, for Hubitat. They've really made some progress on what they're doing. They've got some, they're on their second gen Alexa skill. So they are definitely continuing to do some work over there in Hubitat. But yes, if you, if you, you got with some of these automation, if you don't have internet, um, connectivity, you got to yeah. kind of watch for that as well. And one other tip there, if you use port forwarding at all, um, I would really suggest to look, if you can, at setting up a reverse proxy. If you have a device, if you have a computer that's always on that can run Let's Encrypt as a reverse proxy, you can eliminate all of those port forwards with the reverse proxy. And it's amazing ever since I did it, because then it's just port 443 for SSL from your router. It's one port forward that's forwarded to that reverse proxy. And the reverse proxies, based off the subdomain, is just kicking it out to wherever it needs to go. So I, one little quick tip there. If you're doing any sort of port forwarding, check out a, a reverse proxy. It makes things, first of all, just a ton easier. Uh, and second of all, a little more secure. You're not popping holes in your router all over the place. Yeah. Because a lot of people know those common ports because most people don't change them. Like, hey, SiteHound uses port 8848, and I know that. So I'm going to see if all those ports are open on routers all over because I know that it leads to a SiteHound in VR if they've left it standard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so running it through a reverse proxy, they no longer, you know, it's just 443 that's open. All right. So I might have to look into that because I just opened that port today <laughs> for SiteHound. So I could yeah. look at it through the it's, app. Yeah. You know, and it's not, it, the odds of you actually, someone taking advantage of that are not high. It's it's username and password protected too. It right? is, and it, yeah. but it's us nerds who you know go that extra level of security right. when we can. And plus, then you get to use your really cool domain and just use subdomains. And uh, like security.weger.com goes to my security cameras. That's not my actual URL. But, uh, you know, <laughs> and then vpn.weger.com goes to my VPN. And nextcloud.weger.com goes to my nextcloud instance. And all of that is just because it's hitting that reverse proxy. And the reverse proxy says, hey, what's your subdomain? Okay, I send you to this computer. Oh, I send you to this server. Oh, I send you to that you know, NVR, whatever it means. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool. One of the drawbacks uh, I found in all of this is not price. I dropped about 250 to do all this, you know, these two cameras and, and the, the, the range extender, which isn't terrible. And I probably have 450 into all the cameras right now at retail. If I were to think about the various Especially five the cameras. the quality on those ring cameras is really good. Yeah. Yeah, and I got them. I got good pricing on them. Uh, slick, let Slick Deals be your friend. Let Kevin Schoonover be your friend. Man, that guy. Right. Like there are some great, although I think Slick Deal was the one that I saw to get the, uh, to get the original door. And man, I didn't, I didn't think for a second when that deal came up, I snatched that thing with an, with another Echo Show in there. You guys um, have been posting those in the deals channel on the Discord. So if you guys yeah. are looking for where those are posted, online now, deals, Facebook, yeah. yeah, online deals channel in the Discord is where they're posting those. I have that set. Actually, that's one of the channels that notifies me every time there's a post. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a good one. It's a good one to follow for sure. But one of the drawbacks to it is I'm checking my cams all day long now, right? And I know that will wear off. It like will. I know yeah. eventually it will wear off. But I today I was hey look you want to see so showing people at work you know I went back in I was going to take the day off and then I was like I need it like I had spent so much time doing home automation over this weekend that I was like I need I need to go to work I need to not think about home security or security right. cams or some of those kinds of, you know, some of those kinds of things, so to speak. Um, and so it was super good. So, yeah, I spend a lot of time uh, doing that. Michael Delaney says, port forwarding, uh, what a headache. Actually, um, so this is one area, Mike. Um, today, I uh, was, I, I had accessed it from home, the home, the, the uh, Sighthound app. And so I took my internal uh, IP and I put it in. It worked great. And of course it works great. It's behind the firewall. Yeah. Idiot. So I get to work and I can't figure out why it's not working because it's using an internal IP address. Uh -huh. So I ping my daughter, hey, go to a browser and type in what's my IP and tell me what it says. And so she's smart enough to just do that and give me the numbers back. Put that number in, boom. Uh, authenticate, I am right in. And so, oh, oh, but then I realized at first, not not so. So I had to go into the Bitdefender box 
man, port forwarding on Bitdefender is super, super easy. Go in, say WAN and LAN, hit OK on that, uh, on that, what you're trying to get to, and in case it's this box right here, done, fired right up. So uh, port forwarding, not difficult on Bitdefender. I know on some other um, routers, uh, it can be more complicated, especially when you think of like a PFSense, which has got a ton of options. Although I never found it particularly difficult on PS Sense either. That was actually that was actually pretty easy. And so. I think Sighthound will UPnP if you had that enabled. It, there's uh, a checkbox yeah. in yeah. the um, in possible. Sighthound yeah. where it says configure my router for me, and that's essentially a UPnP checkbox. Box. Like, do you right. want me to UPnP it? And it'll it'll let you. That's a whole other conversation. No, UPnP, it is. Right? It a, is. We don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But it was but. it was it was cool to come into Sighthound and be able to get access to that package cam. Yeah. Uh, that way and got it done. So it and, has. Go ahead. Well, no, you just mentioned that you pinged your daughter. So, um, for if you use a reverse proxy, obviously that means you use a domain. The one uh, little thing that I use is which is real easy too. So if you're using Docker for Let's Encrypt, go ahead and add the Duck DNS. Um, Docker container. It's super simple, and that's all it does. Is it constantly is saying, "Hey, what's my IP? What's my IP?" And it's updating a domain for you. So my actual domain that I own forwards actually to the Duck DNS, and it's free. It's a free service. Um, but then you have a little Docker container. It's always updating. So Jim, if if while you're at work, your uh, power went out at home and your router reset, and you got a new public IP, you wouldn't be worried about it because Duck DNS has been you know updating that. It's a good way to do it. Yeah, it's a good way to do it. Well. For now, uh, port forwarding pretty easy for me, and I'm yeah. not. I yeah. don't. I maybe have two. I think now I just have You'll one. You'll be out of projects one of these yeah. weekends. You're like, you know what? I want to set up a reverse proxy. Let's yeah. let's run Docker. Let's and get see this what we thing. You'll have to mention yeah. it a few more times for I that. Will. Actually, I will. To... if you have Unraid, anyone, any of our listeners have Unraid, just do it. Like, yeah. let's encrypt Docker container from community applications, Duck DNS from community applications. You won't have it up and running in. Uh, five minutes. I mean, it, it's just, it's super, super simple. And I think there's actually even a better one than the Let's Encrypt. I think it's like NGNX something, something, something uh, that actually has a GUI. Um, for Let's Encrypt, you kind of have to edit some comps files, but uh, there's one with a GUI on it too that works really well. Well, a couple weekends from now, uh, yeah, the, the yeah. project. When the home uh, automation allure uh, has wore off. <laughs> I'll get you to set up a reverse proxy. Yeah, well, and and now I'm you know got my eyes on light bulbs and you know just getting. I think the next project is getting this new security light set up, figured out with the porch lights, so that I have. Mm -hmm. I honestly, with LED, I don't care if they're on all the time. Like I really don't care. So Same. yeah, um, you know, it, it's one of those kinds of things. It's better for my cameras if the lights are on all the time. I would love to be able to set both of them to a sun up, sun down kind of automation though and or this one will this setting one i th lights you said yeah i think oh, this has got like i think this has the setting automatically so what i might just do is replace the porch light again not terribly expensive cheaper than some home automation devices and just replace the light like yeah. with a that's got a sensor built into it so that might be the easiest thing to do then leave the switch on all the time in both things just respond to sun up, sun down in motion. So um, there's nothing worse when you have a fully automated house than when guests come and they switch a switch off. <laughs> it's the most annoying thing. All my lights are pretty much uh, smart lights. I'm like, whoa, 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 don't just light. You yeah, ask just... our assistant to do that for you. Okay. We, we have an assistant. We, we have we have someone that does that for us, okay? Yeah. Hello, Lady A. Yeah, Would you yeah, please to turn the light on? And like, yeah. well, what do you call it? This is annoying. I'm just gonna use a switch. I'm like, fine. For the weekend, just use a switch, and then I'll flip all these switches back on when you leave. Well, even though I didn't, I said I didn't want to talk about this right now. Tony said, reading right now, new GE switches and dimmers that don't require a neutral. So was maybe it Google or Alexa just partnered with GE? I think one of them just partnered with those smart switches, and they're like, a, it's a deep integration with those. I can't remember. Thought I saw that in the news. Somewhere. I'm gonna have to do some research. We'll take this to uh, Discord, or we'll take yeah, it to go, Facebook, go to the smart home channel. or maybe we'll do it on Twitter. If you want to hit me on Twitter at Jay Collison, we can talk about it there. I, I'd love to. I, I don't. I'm not going to make that decision uh, very, very quickly, uh, but I will be making it in the next couple of weeks. So I'd love to hear about that, Mike. Um, <laughs> here's 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 one we didn't talk about in the beginning. Another Joe, one from Tajoski. Yeah. Uh, the Ozark, the Ozark Lager. Lager. Man, that's a good beer too. Hard, hard work, honest beer. 
So it's, now I've had pretty tonight. Great. I've already had three different beers from Joe. I've had the s'mores. I've had the honey bock, and mm. then I've had the uh, whatever this is. Oh, uh, You've had them beer. all. You've had yeah. them all. Yeah, Joe. Thanks for again. Them. Thanks again. If you have, by the way, if you have local beers you want to send us to oh, we are drink and try on the show, you it's Jim at the Average Guy <laughs> <laughs> dot TV. We the easiest love, way to get a shout out from us is to uh, send us beer. Love to have your beer, um, Mike. We uh, woke up uh, on the first to no uh, guide center data in the media center box, and I've been. Ta- I won't spend a ton of time on this. You've never used that, but. Nope. We have a lot of media center folks who did. Uh, the guys over at Entertainment 2.0, Josh and um, Richard, had talked a bunch about this in the most recent Entertainment 2.0 um, uh, podcast. But um, it, for me, it was, a, it was a reality. I didn't know how it was going to end. It ended with Sarah saying, oops, there goes the guy data. Now, I've been prepping her for months saying, hey, at some point, this is going to stop. I'd even set up a couple different solutions. You know, we tried YouTube TV and Plex and some of those others. And um, fortunately, over the last couple months, I've been really working with the Plex solution and have been trying different ways of setting it up and making it more efficient and some of those other kind of things. And so when she said, hey, guide data is gone, I'm like, I'm ready for you. It was maybe the first time ever I was, I was like, hey, I am ready. I got a Plex solution. Let's sit down. I want to show you how to do this. And so um, what I ended up doing is taking the Plex, the, the good one, the Plex Pro or whatever that is. And uh, and I actually USB would a what one do you mean good one. Sorry, uh, there's like a, the little round ones now that are like For they Plex? have some new ones. No, no, no. Nvidia Shield. Sorry. Oh, you said Plex Pro. Like, oh, did I? Oh, yeah. Sorry. And I was like, oh, what? Nvidia there's Shield a new Pro. version of Plex. Okay, gotcha. Whatever the one that is good enough to do the, the server portion, the of server part of Plex. Yeah, they got Can these that rounds. Code? It, yes, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think so. So, um. Put a one terabyte SSD drive on there for fast, like for really fast read and writes on there. What well, mostly reads. And because the database, the database on Plex, if you have it on a spinner, is awful. Yeah, like, it can it, it can awful. be so. It was even worse on the Drobo. So oh, I can, I, the Drobo doesn't have an SSD in no. it, does it? Mm. Right. So it's all well. The this database. has an SSD, but it was still not. It doesn't. It's not ideal for right. it. Not ideal for. I it. would almost run it on like a desktop that you have there. Well, I was trying to go really low power. I was trying to go low profile. Well, but I mean, one that you're already running it on, right? Like, because then you would have full transcode. Like, if you have a machine on there, that's what yeah, it's actually, it runs really well on the Shield. D- that's great. I just really, were really well. Trouble yeah, with I was. Certain platforms, not. Yeah. Like well, and- on the Shield with, and he kind of figured out. Like, I kind of figured out. Like, most of those problems were as like I was trying to watch it on the Xbox and the Xbox Plex. Right? Not good. To my so. detriment, because the <laughs> Xbox is my main media box in my living room. Mm-hmm. And if you're live TV, okay, regular TV is, or regular recorded stuff, movies, TV shows, totally fine. Live TV on the Xbox, for some reason, is awful. Yeah. Have you yeah. found that? Like, movies, yeah. great. TV yeah. shows, awesome. Live TV, complete dog shit. It's just, <laughs> like, it's just like, it's awful. It's so bad. And I don't, I have no idea why it's the only part of that app that is terrible. And you know, people have said it for a while and I didn't want to believe it or I thought it would get better. And it just never did on yeah. the Xbox. And sadly, cause I, that's still my main media box. Well, the NVIDIA Shield running Plex would buffer on the to the Drobo. And even when I put a spinner it, uh, on that thing in USB mode, it was slow. The SSD, yeah. man, just I, it eliminated any – because I, I, I can't have her waiting. Yeah. It just it has to go fast. Right. So I sat her down, and I said, okay, here's – like your remote got infinitely easier. Like left, right, up, down, hit this, back, and volume. Whereas before we had that media center remote, and it had buttons. Like, it must have had 80 buttons on that media center remote. Right. You could never find the one that you want when the TV's too loud. It was it's always it was always a hassle. So she's like, oh, I got that figured out. And I'm like, okay, here's, here's how you schedule shows now. The one big drawback with media center, you could watch while you're recording. With Plex, you can't do that. Either you're recording or you're watching live. You can. Mm. You can't start a recording and watch it at the same time. You can't. You can mm-hmm. watch it on another. You can. I think you can go back and watch it on another channel, but you can't watch that recording of it. Anyways, okay. Not not a big deal. Oh, 
Correct. You can't start watching the recording while it's recording. Right. You can watch it live and yeah. be recording. Yeah. But you, yes, correct. You can't go back to the beginning of no. the recording. Yep. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, and that was, the like, media center was great at that. But she, so I said, so that's not going to work. She's like, okay, that's not a problem. Really? Okay. And then I said, and you can now schedule and on your phone or on the computer. And she's like, Oh, I can, I can just, and she loves that. Or even just watch on your phone. Yeah. Or yeah. watch on the computer. Right? She's like, I'm never going to watch on the computer. She's like, but scheduling the shows, I, she loves the the grid guide on the computer. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to schedule everything here and then I'll just watch it there. She's like, this is going to be great. So, okay. So we're in full test mode. It's, it hasn't even been a week yet. She's in it, but I haven't heard one complaint. Seems to be working. We re so set up all our shows to record. So it's on the, uh, the shield. And you said, mm -hmm. is the recordings even going to the SSD? Yeah. Yeah. So how much space do you got? Well, a terabyte. Nice. Yeah, I think we're okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I think, and it's super fast. I mean, it is just, and it's, there's no heat. There's nothing, like, I don't have a big computer up there blazing away. Yeah. I don't. In fact, I'm going to leave the media center computer up probably for a month just to, it's Windows 7, right? Right. Just so it's there. And then one day I'm going to say, hey, you need this thing anymore? And she's going to say no. And down it comes. And uh, and then I'm... Or burst mining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that great of a box. Yeah. Uh, but that's a great thought. <laughs> that's a it's... super great thought. Yeah. And now boom, more burst mining. No. And I think the, I'm going to actually take the Xbox out there so she can watch movies. Because that's been a... She loses, the, she loses the DVD player. And I'm not playing the Xbox enough here to make it worth leaving here. It'd be better on the big TV anyways. And if I ever yeah. want a game, she's, there's plenty of time when I can yeah. I can do that. Um, so the other night, uh, uh, this last night, Sammy and I were enjoying a beverage on the on the deck. I mentioned this early in the show. We came in and we were laughing about some YouTube stuff. And I said, "Hey, let's just let's just go watch it." And it was super great to go start the YouTube cast it to the to the nvidia shield turns on the tv and everything um just start showing it and it was it was dropped it simple and i think i uh, we're really going to enjoy that nvidia shield on the tv replacing the the computer don't have to worry about updates for the most part don't have to worry about any virus for the most part uh, for how I really you like use it. Plex. It sounds like that's a perfect machine yeah. for you. Yeah. Because even because even on the hard drive, you don't have a big movie library you're storing. You're mm -hmm. just it's literally just for TV shows. Right. It's right. what's more than enough. You're not trans. You're not having a bunch of users hit this thing at the same right. time, right? right? So that, that does sound like it's perfect. Yeah. And man, yeah. you're so right. I did not. I have never used the YouTube Cast feature. <laughs> Until all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, the Xbox, I think, has that. Yeah. Because yeah. I was I was trying to use the remote on the Xbox to, like, yeah. search. I'm like, wait, 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 I can do this on my phone and then cast it. Oh, my gosh. And you can queue them. I had no idea about the queue. <laughs> so I'm just, like, scrolling queue, queue, queue. And also, I just sat there. I had hours of content available. Oh, it was great. Oh, no, it's awesome. Yeah. I had yeah. never used it before because yeah. I didn't I didn't know the Xbox YouTube app had that. I should have. should have thought of that. But uh, I accidentally tapped it on my phone, and it said, hey, Xbox. I'm like, that's a destination. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I have about six destinations in the house. Like I can literally cast to just about everything. My what son brought they? his. What do you mean? Wait, what are the devices that you can cast? Uh, so my son has a TV, a uh, big fifty-five inch. Oh. <laughs> Uh, that's got Chromecast built into it. Nvidia Shield's got a Chromecast built into it. Okay. I have a. I had a Chromecast on it. I've got a Chromecast down here, on on this box. So that's four. Uh, I might have one more somewhere that I can't remember what. Oh. Look at that. I had no idea some of these were, yeah, all the Roku sticks. Yeah. So I just yeah. opened mine up. <laughs> I have three Roku sticks. Kitchen display, what's that? Oh, that's the Google Hub. Yeah. Okay, so that's another mm -hmm. one. Yeah, that's another Apparently one my TV to. natively, I had no idea, was one. Yeah, yeah. Your smart TV's and probably got Chromecast. Yeah. Because that Xbox is on, and this one, once I turn it on, it would probably show up too. It's a whole, dude. It's a whole new world. Like it's just a different. Like it with in one weekend, we all of a sudden got security cameras everywhere, and, um, you know, uh, I think on the shield, I might even be able to use the Google Assistant to to see any of my cameras that are now that would be huge. Google enabled. So is the shield owned by Google now? Uh, no, but it's it Android. Android. It's an, it runs Android TV. 
Yeah, and it has the Google cool. Assistant in it. Yeah. So, you know. You'll have to let I, me know if that works. Because you I've could from your TV. for a replacement for that Xbox in the living room. Mm-hmm. And a Shield might be my answer. I was thinking Apple TV because uh, the interface there is just gorgeous. But they're so expensive. How much, how much is a Shield? Uh, 179 Okay, so probably the same price as an Apple yeah. TV. Yeah. Huh. And watch for them on Slick Deals because you'll see they, they run deals on them all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, set an alert up on Slick Deals okay. for it. So, um, Mike, you got a pair of Apple uh, um, AirPod Pro. Yeah. This, did you get those for Christmas or I was did. that a yeah, – you, were you Santa present. for yourself? No, no, no. It was a Christmas <laughs> present. Yeah? And um, these are the earbuds I've been waiting for. Uh, just plain and simple. So I, I didn't know I was waiting for them. I didn't know this is what I wanted. Um you know, when I saw them at first, I'm like, man, those look really cool. Now that I have them and I, I've been using them on a daily basis, uh, I am just, I've, I love, I like over the ear for the airplane. But besides that, I hated wearing my bows anywhere else just because, you know, they're big and clunky. And even in my office, I didn't want to wear them because, I don't know, it just like the, the look and the feel, I don't know. So having true noise canceling, active noise canceling, not just passive noise canceling, active noise canceling earbuds, um, you know, man, Jim, how long has it been since I praised Apple on a product? This is mm, weird, yeah. uh, right? Like, I, I, I haven't really in a long time, and yeah. they, I think they nailed the pros. Yeah. These things are fa- and worth. If I had, I would still be happy with them if I had paid the price myself. Um, although they were a Christmas gift, if I had paid the price, I would be totally happy with them. First of all, the transparent mode is super interesting too. So what these earbuds have is, first of all, you can turn them completely off noise canceling. That's really weird. It's it's like, um, I mean, it, it's like having AirPods in that's sealed in your ears. So hearing anything outside of you, you hear like a muffled version. So if I had them in off mode, which it doesn't even default to at all, you actually have to actively switch it to off mode. Um, you hear your music. It's just like having these earbuds I have in my ears right now, the regular Apple earbuds in, um, but they're sealed. So everything else around you is kind of muffled and they're not noise canceled. So it's a weird setting. Um, then there's noise canceling, which is great with uh, earbuds I mean obviously it's not Bose over the ear quality just because it's not over the ears Um, but man I was shocked at the quality of the noise cancelling they're able to achieve with a sealed earbud so that was really cool but Jim it's the transparency mode that is awesome so this transparency mode you have sealed earbuds that usually give you a buffer then they they use the microphones on the outside to almost amplify what's a, not amplify but just allow the outside sound mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. you feel like you have nothing in really? your ear really? it's it's the weirdest experience the transparency mode cuz you feel like you have nothing in but then all of a sudden you can hear your music and the pros have the feature where they'll announce your messages so it'll wait it'll it'll use the microphones and it'll wait till you're not in a conversation so if you and I were talking right now, it's not going to alert me. I stop talking for a bit. You stop talking. I'm in a quiet mode. It'll say, hey, you have a new message from Hannah. And it'll read the message to you. It's, so it's, it's, I didn't know it had that feature. It's a feature I didn't actually knew it even had until I had it in my ears. Um, but with that transparency mode, I, on a Saturday afternoon, will usually have them in around the house. Because I can hear my family. I can yeah. hear stuff. I get the yeah. notifications. I can hear music if I want to turn them on. My notifications run through there. If I want to watch a YouTube video, then I am the only one hearing it. It's not everyone. Uh, that transparency mode is is pretty rock solid. I really is like them. like, so it, it's just, is it letting the sound through or is it actually replicating the sound? I mean. Well, you got to think about it. It's a sealed earbud. So it's not yeah. just, I mean, there's no way for it to like break right. the seal. So right. it's literally using the microphone. Right. Because uh, it's not Did, opening up any physical things. So does it sound different? Sounds because it's totally natural. Really? Okay. To- that's the okay. weird. It sounds like you just. Yeah. It sounds like you don't have earbuds in. Are they uncomfortable? I, I never no. liked. So they have okay. three different fits okay. for the. They comes with three different size, uh, whatever they're called, the, the silicone thing that seals mm-hmm, in your ear. Mm-hmm, and I'm mm-hmm. actually I'm one size on one and a different size on the other. You have and lopsided ears because it, it has an ear test that it has a yeah. fit test, and you run okay. it and it plays sound and it can hear itself, so it tries to tell you. Oh. And uh, one was really uncomfortable, and so I switched it. I'm like, is it weird to use one size and the other? I'm like, no. And so my right ear is bigger than my left ear, apparently. So, wow. um, yeah, that's, I use two different ones. That's not going to make you feel awkward for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, I'm not <laughs> self conscious about that at all. So, uh, um, so like, uh, these are 250, right? Retail. 250 for these yeah, these so, AirPod yeah. Pros yep. from Apple. All right, so my Quiet Comfort 35s, 
were 350. I could probably sell those for a couple hundred bucks now. They're, uh, they're pretty new, right? Or well, because I think you use yours mainly for travel, right? Yeah, I do. I only use them for travel. And I don't know. Verdict is out for me because I haven't put an airplane. I don't uh, know if these are going to perform as well on kay. an airplane. Now, kay. the reviewers have said, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, it's just, they are different, right? They're kay. not going to be your bows. Um, yeah. You really need, just need to go to the Apple store and try them and kay. be like, oh, huh, interesting. Because these, for me, are more of, I, I have no problem having those in my ears pretty much all day. Whereas bows, if you walk around with those on your head at the office, I've done it before, but it almost gives everyone the idea that you don't want to talk to them. Yeah. Earbuds, it's like, I could still probably wave you down and you'll pull one out real quick. You're probably yeah. just, you have the yeah. cans on your ears. It's, right. it's a little bit more of a, I'm not looking to talk to anyone kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I will let you know when I take my first, I'll take them on a plane in um, March. Okay. I'll go to San Diego okay. and I'll let you well, know how they work. I'm, I'm $250 into cameras, not ear, uh, uh, AirPods at the moment. So yeah. it'll be good to give me some time to re rebuild the cash. Um, but I would be, um, I, I, I am a big earbud fan as opposed to the cans. Now, the cans work better than anything else as far as noise canceling goes. So when I was on an airplane, that's the best solution. But if we get to the point where we've got in-ear noise canceling that's at the same value as over the ear, like those posts, I am all in. I would, because of my glasses and yeah. some, and I got a big and head. And they could be. And that thing sits know. on your head and it hurts yeah. after a while. Like, I'd love to go earbuds. And I'll be honest, if the latency is low on them, I'd even use them here in podcasting where I'd put them in. I'd yeah. bring them in, especially if they'll let the ambient sound through because that's what I want to hear. I want to, you know, when I'm when they're in, I, want, I do want to hear my own voice come back through right. on them. That's the, and that's the other part about noise yeah. canceling you yeah. really don't like. And so these, you get the best of both worlds. You're on a plane, turn on full noise canceling mode. Anywhere else, really, I, I'm usually in transparency mode all the time, even though it has the noise canceling. There's not many times when I need true noise canceling. Right. Sometimes if I'm in my office and I really want to zone yeah. out the world, I'll turn them on. Um, but most time I'm in transparency mode. So it's kind of nice to, with one headset, I mean, there's not many where you can switch from being able to hear the outside world and not. And that's, I would never use Bose headphones on a podcast because you don't, you're probably yelling at the microphone because you can't hear yourself. Right yeah, no, no, you can't. Yeah. No, you're only hearing, it's a, it's a weird, for me, it's so weird because I've used earbuds for so long. And it, for me, it's the purest audio sound I can get uh, that are both in-ear monitors and the ambient sound that of my own voice that I'm hearing around me. Yeah, I really like that experience. Um, earbuds had made some Bluetooth speakers or some Bluetooth uh, earbuds, I think, at some point. And, and I think I remember the latency was so bad in them. Those early versions, those early Bluetooth versions had really bad latency built into them. Yeah. I think they're getting that mostly fixed. I interviewed somebody on a podcast a couple weeks ago, and they were using... Um, it was in Japan of all places and they were using AirPods and he goes, no, no latency on this end. And, and was like, he using the microphone from them as well? He was, he was. And it actually sounded pretty good. Did it really? Yes. We'll have to do yeah. a test on that sometime. I'll maybe I, like, yeah. I, wouldn't sometime. Right. I wouldn't do it as a host. I wouldn't do it as the host, but as a, yeah, yeah. But just to test it and see. Yeah. So these are another option too. So I've gone with these for something like podcasting. And what are those? Um, so these are the cheap, cheap, cheap versions. They're Samsung. I mean, they're cheap, yeah, but yeah, I'm just talking about the style. They're open right, back. Right. So this is yes. open to the inside. So when I put these on, it doesn't sound like I'm in a fishbowl, right. yeah. um, yeah, but yeah. they're still nice, big drivers, no, like, yeah. right? And yeah. so they work out pretty well. One of the, one of the things, and we'll wrap the conversation with this, one of the great things those quiet comforts are good at is the sound isolation on the microphone is so good. So when you're on a conference call with somebody and you're in a really busy space, it really does a nice job of only getting your voice while you're oh, on right. that call. Yes. I have the old versions that don't have a yeah. microphone, so that's good oh, to know. I've never yeah. used them on a conversation. With, in a conversation that's before. a big selling point for okay. Bose on those is that you can be in a really busy office, and it's only going to pick up your voice uh, if you're on the call with them. So um, that that's kind of another – you know, it's kind of another reason maybe to have them, but uh, other Jim says, believe yeah. me, if you walk around with Q-tips hanging from your ears, people think the same thing. He's probably referring back to when I said, uh, the bows make people think you want to talk to them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe. I, I don't think... But they also think so, they're super cool. So, other, yeah. other gym, I kind of agree with you, and I kind of don't. Like, I'm getting kind of used to people walking around with them on, and, you know, you kind of... You don't look as dorky as if you have a pair of cans on. I've watched people walking around, you know, doing things, and you're like, mm. but you got the earbuds in. It's kind of like, okay. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe things are shifting. It's like, don't um, talk to me, but I'm still approachable, you know. <laughs> In the Facebook group and in the Discord group, I put out a question uh, this week about NordVPN and about um, Ease US and some of their products. And both those companies have approached me about sponsorship for this. And I've been really, really, really careful about who I kind of let into this space as far as that. And so if you have feedback on any of those companies, and by the way, the Facebook group has actually been really, really helpful on this, especially on the NordVPN side of giving me some feedback. I'm kind of working with them a little bit. I'm not giving them a, oh yeah, I'll take your money and I'll say whatever you want about it. Yeah. I'm kind of like the, 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 um, the ease us guys. I said, Hey, I want to use your sync product because that's if I remember a couple, I don't know, six months, a year ago, I said, Hey, what are we using for sync these days? And I ended up on on uh, always sync um, that I'm actually I bought a license for, and then I'm currently using to sync um, files. What am I syncing? I'm syncing my backups. So I've got the Moro data box that has all of my everything, all my podcast stuff on it. And then I want to sync that over to the Drobo just as a backup copy. So I have a local backup copy of it as well. I I land on an always sync. It's been great. Version nineteen. Uh, they've been around forever. I think I paid the 30 bucks or whatever it is for lifetime of always sync. But I started using this ease us sync tool and man, it's dropped dead simple and it does a pretty good job. It lacks the UI. I'm going to be working with it over the next couple of weeks, but if you got any feedback on those, send me an email, Jim at the average guy TV. I may try and work some kind of deal with them that they give us a discount code or something for listeners, but before I did any of that stuff, I kind of wanted to make sure I wasn't taking on kind of a doofus company that was going to screw us in the process. Smart. So, yeah. yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't really want to take money from them. Just to be honest with you, if I can get you guys discounts, that's probably what I'll do. That way, you guys can kind of decide um, what we'll talk about it a little bit, and then we'll move on. There's no sense in you know. I always feel weird and obligated when I take money, so it's a lot easier if I just do it for free. Jim at the average guy. Dot TV. If you want to send me your feedback, you can do it in the Discord group or in the Facebook group. We're doing that as well. And so appreciate that. Next week, Paul Brarin is back. And Paul has got a lot of cool stuff uh, to talk about and a lot of things going on in Paul Brarin's life. Um, and so you want to come back, Mike. I think we got a pretty dynamite um, list. We got a good lineup coming up. <laughs> it, it, it is indeed. So you're not going to want to miss us live at all, at least until, I don't know, this time next year. We're going to have a ton of stuff coming along. Uh, Paul, like I mentioned, Paul's coming back. Dwayne Robinson's coming back. Jay uh, Madison is coming back. And we're going to talk some hardware. Actually, two weeks in a row, Ryan is going to CES and is going to be covering CES. I'll try to get a hold of the link to where they're doing that and get that out on our social media site. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do it that way. We'll be promoting that while he's at C CES. And he'll be coming back here in early February talking about it as well. Um, Ryan's in the chat room right now uh, and has been on the show uh, before, Ryan Kirshner. And uh, and then Joel, after that, um, Joel is – and Ryan will be on the show in February talking about CES, so that's super cool. Joel from Life Door will be back as well. If you've got a guest, a guest idea, someone you want to be on, someone you know that you want to be on, you've got something that you want to talk about and be on, contact me, Jim at the Average Guy. Dot TV, and uh, we will get you in there as well. We'll have a little bit of you got some time for some post show tonight, yeah, Mike. So, can we talk a little untangle in the post show? Yes, would that we be should. would yeah. that be cool? Okay, so we'll talk because Mike, like he always does, has moved on to something new. So, well, I reverted it's it's on yeah, you know, okay. revert it on routers. If you guys are interested in routers and my saga with always switching routers, stick on the post show. <laughs> All right, we'll cover that here in the post show. Don't forget. Uh, if you want to support us, you can do that on Patreon, theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon. Get you there. we got a $5 plan. Super easy, and we appreciate anything that you do for us that helps us do what we do. I mentioned the Discord and the Facebook groups. Just go to the theaverageguy.tv, then slash Facebook or slash Discord. We'll get you there as well. You can send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. Find me on Twitter at jcollison. 
Mike is at Uyghur Tech if you want to find him there. You can also, um, if you need hosting for anything, Christian has really fired up. And, man, the speed over there is ridiculous at the moment at Maple Grove Partners. So you can get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting uh, from people that you know and trust. And he's wanting to take on folks in the community. Plans start at 10 bucks. Five more if you need email. MapleGrovePartners.com gets you there as well. Download our mobile app, HomeGadgetGeeks.com. And I think that's it. By the way, we are still super strong on HelloFresh. I just had to say it because I haven't said it in a couple weeks. I got a bunch of coupon codes. We just made two dinners this week that were just amazing. And I just, Mike, I just don't get tired of it. I made roasted zucchini that had Tuscan heat um, uh, uh, um, spices on. We put panko and mozzarella on top. And I never would have done that. Like roasted couscous. Never would have done that. Like, I just don't, the sauces alone that I make with HelloFresh are like, oh my God, I never would have thought. I'm not a sauce guy. I'm now a sauce guy. Are so, you a squirrel guy? You said you had a squirrel in your backyard. I could come give you oh. some awesome squirrel <laughs> recipes too. Mm. You'd have to, we'll you'd soak have to get in some buttermilk and we'll get it. You would have yeah. to take care of You'd have to take care of them. You would have to take care of them for me. The cats have taken care, care of all the rabbits. We have a great dinner at the same time. You know, I think that's a double win. If we, uh, I, I don't know. I'm no not squirrel? sure. If okay. you need, if, if you want the box to come and not the squirrel, send me an email. i get you a whole week for free. And I'd love to have you try it out again. Uh, no compensation for me in that. I just don't let 2020 be the year you eat plain. Like quit eating eat plain squirrel, food. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure they don't endorse that, but that's yeah, yeah. But I mean, but it's a good yeah. Don't listen to my recipes on Squirrel. You should definitely do Hello Fresh instead. It's no, better. say hey. I've had both. Trust me, I've had both. I would definitely go with Hello Fresh if I was. Oh okay, yeah. Hey, Lady A, show me some Squirrel recipes. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at theaverageguy.tv/live. We'll do a little bit of post show. We want to thank those who came out live doing that tonight. It always matters to us that when you're here. Appreciate you guys in the chat room. Stay around for a little bit of a post show. With that, we'll say goodnight, everybody.